Good morning. We welcome you here this morning. It's not quite the way we planned our Boxing Day Sunday, but uh, we are joining you nevertheless, uh, at least online. So we're grateful and, and praising the Lord that we are able to do that. It amazes me that uh, our God is unchanging and that we were just saying as, as, as different things will, will seek to, uh, to close us out, He makes ways, He makes our path straight so that we can still be together. So we want to take a moment to welcome you in prayer this morning, and we'll do just that. Father God, we thank you for an opportunity once again to, to gather together, even if it's in our living rooms. Father, we've seen throughout the ages, as your hand has been with your church, that wherever governments have oppressed or, or circumstances has oppressed, whenever the, your gospel, your good news, your people gathering together is, is hindered, Father, you make a way whether it's an underground church, whether it's a chance to, to join online, to, to have small home groups. Father, you are there and you are ever present and we thank you and praise you. We think about folks that are, are stranded today, perhaps not at home, and we just pray that you would be with them and that they would know that you are the, the stalwart that does not change. You are our everlasting Father that holds us in his hand. And though everything around us may change, you do not. We can have faith and confidence and trust in you. We thank you for your love and for your provision in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to start with just a very quick little chorus. Uh, I'll do it, go through it twice. It's called Emmanuel. I'm sure it's probably familiar to most folks. <laughs> text that Nori will be presenting and it is from Luke 2 verses 1 through 11 and I'm reading in the English Standard Version. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was the governor of Syria and all went to be registered each to his own town and Joseph also went up from Galilee from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be re registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. I hope you'll join me with singing Angels from the Realms of Glory. Again, a, a familiar hymn. Angels from the realms of glory Woo! 
favorite hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. together uh, the best news to go tell on the mountain and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain.
much for joining us in singing. Greetings, everyone. I hope you're doing well today. I hope you've had a meaningful Christmas. That Christmas Eve was meaningful for you and Christmas Day. This video is, this message is coming to you through video uh, today because Vancouver Island, it's like Vancouver Island has had a bucket of water poured over it and then it's frozen and gotten really cold. As you know, there's been multiple accidents and it's very treacherous out there. And so in, con in conversation with the elders, we decided to put this message online and the music and um, and then close the doors to the church uh, so for everyone's safety. And so, but friends, we, our prayer is that as Christmas comes to a close, the Advent season comes to a close officially uh, yesterday or today, this weekend, that this time, it doesn't have to end. We celebrate the birth of Christ all year long, but this time, we, we set aside the Church of Jesus Christ, sets aside one month a year so that we just don't we just don't waste our life. We don't go through year after year after year without saying, hey, this birth matters. This birth absolutely changed the world. This birth was prophesied. You go back to the prophecies, big ones in Daniel about the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God came through the birth of God's son and the kingdom surrounds him. It's all about him. And so we don't want to waste our life going year after year after year and just just not just not looking forward into the new year and saying, hey, is is my relationship with Jesus Christ? What's that like? What's going on there? And Advent season is a way for us to say, Lord, how am I how am I walking with you? What do you want to say to me? and reflect on that amazing birth. And so I just want to pray and ask that God would touch us through this message and do what he wants to do in this Advent season. We've been praying that and talking about that for, for, for five weeks now. So Lord, I just ask that you would do that, that you do some wonderful things in us, in our church, in our families, in our community. Lord, I, I just really pray that for people that are working through something this Christmas, that you would you would reach out and you would touch them. There's a vulnerability to the Advent season. There's that the whole message of the birth of your son is about vulnerability and power coming into the person of Jesus Christ. And so we want to stay connected to you as much as we can. We want to walk with you as close as we can. We want you to bear fruit through us. We want to abide in you, Lord. And so we're asking that you touch us. Our hearts are open. If they're not open, make them open. Irresistibly, make them soft. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. So there's a family that asked for prayer last night as they uh, had had people stranded on the highway and we've, we've been praying for you. And we're praying that that God has brought you home safely. Friends, about 3,000 years ago, God spoke to the world through a prophet named Micah. And I just want to read. It's a very, very powerful passage, a piece of prophecy in, in Micah 5, 1 and 2. God prophesied through Micah about the birth of his son and says this, Let's read just verse 2. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me, the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from old, from everlasting. I just want to read that again. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, Though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings are whose goings forth 
are from of old, from everlasting. Everlasting. The one who is to come forth is one from of old, the one who has never had a beginning or an end, everlasting. And he came to earth, took on human flesh, and he is the light of the world. And we want that light to shine bright in us always in this next year. In this next year of uncertainties, if there's anything that this cluster, this intense cluster of weather patterns in, in the mix of this pandemic has taught us is that we are heading into a year where there's going to be some storms. And we want the light of the world to shine, radiate brightly through the Church of Jesus Christ through all of these challenges. And we can have peace and we can have rest in our souls and comfort and joy in these times. But I wonder what the people thought when they heard this cryptic prophecy for the first time. I mean, why was Bethlehem so, Bethlehem so special? Have you ever thought about that? I mean, certainly the great King David had been born there, but that was over 300 years before the prophecy that Micah gave. And what kind of ruler could be greater than him? David. I wonder how long they watched with anticipation for this to happen. A year 10 years, 50 years. Though I could imagine that it had been forgotten or dismissed after a century or so by the majority of people. Some still waited expectantly. And then one day, 700 years, 700 years before those words were spoken, pardon me, sorry, 700 words after those words were spoken, a special baby was born there in that small and rather unremarkable village. In fact, in an animal trough. Not fit for even the poorest of families to birth a child. And the faithful went there to witness it and to spread the news to those who had given up hope, that hope had come. 700 years is a long time to get something ready, don't you think? I wonder what happened on that plot of land during that time. 700 years on that plot of land. Think about it. Perhaps shepherds grazed their sheep for a while. And then maybe a man bought the land to build a house and maybe it was sold a few times or passed down through generations of family. Then someone got an idea to perhaps buy some, get some livestock, build a stable, a manger. Then a governor decided to call for a census. Made people travel a long ways. People traveled back to their hometowns to register. Many came back to Bethlehem, but had no family left there anymore. So they stayed in guest houses, filling up every room in the town. There was no place left for the birth of the king. And then all the many stories converged in just the right timing for Mary and Joseph to arrive and to have their baby exactly where and how he was supposed to be born. So it was no wonder that all who came to see him fell on their faces before him and worshipped him in awe. They were witnessing, friends, the fulfillment of 700 years of preparation. I wonder if in that, I wonder if in that, there's a message for us in this next new year. It's the year that is just before us now. 700 years of preparation and all things converged and came together. 700 years on that land and eventually there was a stable ready. No room in the ends. Stable ready for the birth of the king. You know, we don't have those kind of prophecies to tell us right now. But as we continue on in this season of this pandemic, I wonder if there's something that is being prepared for us in a new way in the life of this church. I wonder if there's something being prepared for us in our lives in our families during this time, in people that you know this time, right now. Time, there's just so many challenges, so much. You just feel like you're getting kind of, you're faced with intense information. You're absorbing some intense information, one after another, one after another. It seems like these days, if it's not weather patterns, it's it's more viruses and more restrictions. And, and then there's there's all the personal stuff that we are dealing with in our own lives and in our families, perhaps in our workplaces, in our own hearts, in our own bodies. Perhaps there's, there's health challenges and concerns there. 
I wonder, I, I just really wonder if we just pulled it all together. We look at how God was so intentional in preparing for the birth of the king, the birth of his son. That I wonder if there's something being prepared for us in any way in the life of our church during this season that is so full of challenge right now. A virus spread around the world two years ago, and as a church, as believers, we were confronted with a different kind of a challenge, a different kind of darkness, if you will. A different kind of challenge, for sure. We know that, but I wonder if it's a different kind of darkness. It's not light. We know that there's light in it because Jesus is in the middle of it. But it itself is not light. This isn't where we thought we'd be a year ago. And likely it's not where we will be forever in our own lives. When you look at your own life, we know that there's going to be things that will change a year from now. We look at our lives a year ago, there's things that have changed in our lives now, the things that have changed in our church. They've gone through a visioning process where we began two, two and a half years ago, three years ago to develop our, our core values. And out of that came a, a vision statement. And then out of that has come a desire and a conviction to change the name of our, our church, not our theology, not our denominational affiliation, but the name of our church so that we can move into a new holy chapter where we want to say to our community that we want to hold on to all the things that are important and right and solid, but we want to absolutely love you as much as we can, just the way Jesus would right where you're at. And the name on that church we feel like is an important thing. And so we're moving forward in that. There's been a lot that has happened and a year from now, there'll be we won't be in the same place as we are now. Friends, for now, though, we, we watch, we wait, as the story continues to unfold. The story of Jesus merged into the story of our own lives. As he continues to weave together both unusual situations with unusual connections. Unusual situations. If we've learned anything these last two years is that we are in a season of unusual situations. But one thing we have seen over and over again is that God has been weaving together unusual connections and unusual miracles in the midst of that. And he's going to do it again in this next year. We don't know how long this pandemic will last. But we do know that we do know the one who is does last and is everlasting the one from of old and he's walking with us he lives in us and he's the light of the world one thing we know for sure friends though absolutely one thing we know for sure is that he is not making he is not done making preparations for us he's not done making preparations for what he has for us as the church in our church he has a future for our church he has a next chapter for our church, and he has a next chapter for you. Anything and everything you're going through in your life, he's in the middle of. And he wants to work, and he wants to move, and he wants to weave and do some miraculous and mighty things. I can tell you that for sure. And so these are the, this is the kind of hope that's got to stir up inside of us when we linger and ponder and sit with Advent once a year. He's shown us his intentionally in in intentionality in planning for the birth of his son. And so we can trust that he's still work. He's still at work, just as he promised 2,000 years ago. The baby that came to Bethlehem grew to be the most influential presence that ever walked the earth. He taught humanity a better way to live, even to the point of willingly dying a grotesque and painful death to save us. True. It's true. Many people have died on behalf of another, but none have died and risen from a sealed tomb, closed grave, but only Jesus, only Jesus. And as I reflect on that band of disciples, that band of brothers that journeyed with Jesus, those were unusual times for them too. <laughs> I mean, they were, they were experiencing one new thing after another with this, this, this God man and and then came the 
the suffering, the death, and the resurrection, and boom, then came the church. And the Holy Spirit moved through the Mediterranean world, the rest of the world like a grass fire, in the middle of unusual challenges. And in the middle of all of that, God was still weaving together unusual unusual miracles with unusual challenges. And I believe that that's, 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 I get that sense now as a pastor. I get, I get, the sense I get is that there's something happening in, in our world. God is wanting to do something. So the question is, what is he doing now? I really want to encourage you to grab a journal and grab a piece of paper this next week and ask, ask yourself, just, just sit in the quietness of your own heart. And then after you've done that, perhaps grab a friend, grab your spouse and ask, okay, what's he doing now? What is he doing now? The one who came to save. He knows what's become of us. He knows what we're doing. He's right here with us. He knows what's going on. Friends, he's doing what he, he's promised. He's doing what he's promised. He's preparing a new chapter for us. He's taking care of us in this season of challenge that we're in. That's the hope that we've got to see in this season of Advent. He hasn't gone anywhere. The one who came so humbly, vulnerability merged with power in the person of Jesus Christ. He's still here with us. He's not going anywhere. He'll be with us to the end of the age, Matthew 28, 18 to 20. You know, we often... We often quote this, those words of Jesus when we baptize people. We often quote it, almost always quote it, when we're questioning people in terms of their doctrine on baptism, discipleship, spiritual formation. When people come to faith, they grow in their faith. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And lo, and behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The one who is vulnerable and powerful, the one of old, the one who is everlasting, the king, the one who brought the kingdom, he is with us all the way to the end of the line, all the way till he returns again. He's with us. So friends, do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus said, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back to take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going, John said. John Jesus said in John 14, 4, 1 to 4. Do you know the place where he went? Thomas, one of his followers, wasn't so sure. So he asked that very question. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 5 and 6. In this Advent season, friends, we... May we have the courage and the faith to believe and to wait. Even during times of mystery, even during times when we just can't see the way forward. May we have the courage and the faith to believe and to wait. He has a good track record. He has a perfect track record of, of, of preparing good things for us. So let's watch. Let's wait in expectation as we keep moving forward with what he knows he wants us to do. I really believe that Advent has got to stir that up, that vision in us, that kind of hope in us of seeing him here in the present so that we can see him shine in the future before it even comes. We know he's going to be there. We've got to have faith he's going to be there. There's going to be times in these next 12 months that our hearts are going to flutter. We're going to feel stress. We're going to feel uncertainty about many things. But Jesus says, God the Father has a perfect track record of preparation. It took 700 years, 
longer than that even, to prepare to send his son, the one, the one from of old, the one who's everlasting. And he's still with us today. And scripture tells us very clearly that he's coming again. But the days leading up to when he comes again are going to become turbulent. And we have said this many times in the last two years that something has happened. Something has happened in that period of time. We're moving into a new dimension of the end times. And it needs to stir up, not in a way of fear in any way, but in a way of, of hope and courage to begin to look in a new way in these days towards Jesus Christ, the light of the world. And so, friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift, a, lift up his countenance on you and give you his peace this week. I pray that with all my heart. Amen.